Hi everyone, Chris Petrie here. Thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it very much. We're gonna have some fun, and we're gonna we're gonna do a still life today. And um, it's really uh, fun to just uh, maybe set up some things uh, that you can find around the house, and and uh, things that are readily available, just to practice up on your skills as a watercolor artist. Uh, does that make sense? Stuff you can just find any you know. Um, Practicing contour drawing and uh, painting is really, uh, with watercolor, is a lot of fun because it's really a quick, easy setup. You don't have to have a lot of um, tarps down or anything like that or anything too fancy. It's just, you know, a matter of um, having maybe a sketchbook or some paper and, you know, you can uh, work on um, practicing up on some small uh, comps and uh, any, at any time, you know, that you have a little bit of um, spare time to uh, work on things. So, uh, all I have really, it's very simple. I across from me I just have a um, some foam board set up in a uh, L configuration so basically it's um, really quite simple it's basically just I have two uh, I guess they're about 18 by 24 pieces of foam board and I have them set up across from me like this so one is one piece of foam, foam board is like this and the other piece is like this so it's like an L shape like that and I have it taped along here along this edge with some uh, uh, duct tape and I use those pieces of foam board I set them up on a bucket across from me in my studio here on a uh, spackle bucket and um, then I um, set up my still lifes on this and then I paint right you know right from that the only thing I did a little different uh, is I had uh, purchased online a, a real inexpensive used um, tablecloth and napkin set which had some interesting colors on it like this so, um, uh, I use one of the napkins, uh, cloth napkins, just to drape over the top of the um, foam board. And then I set up my still life. And I'm using some good plastic fruit I got online. Again, this I found online. And I found pretty much all apples, oranges, lemons, peppers, um, you name it, um, bananas, grapes, every type of fruit, vegetable, pep, you know, like um, celery, um, eggplant. I found like every type of, you know, fruit and vegetable you can find, in a, you know, in the supermarket online. So I just got these. They look very convincing, very real. So you could, you can, does that make sense? This is, this looks, you know, incredibly real, except it's, you know, I don't have to worry about it um, spoiling or anything. I just leave it in a, a small container, plastic tub in my studio. And then when I want to do some still ice, I just take out my um, plastic fruit. It's actually a styrofoam. So it's like a styrofoam with um, a really great uh, texture and, and paint on it to make it look incredibly realistic. So I'm going to set that up across from me. And uh, again, our, our simple... Our simple setups are really easy as far as our art supplies. Some tape, a round paintbrush, watercolor brush. Um, I always have some uh, tissue to uh, blot up a little bit if we have to. If there's a little bit of a problem with one of our washes or brush strokes or a piece of, you know, some paint drips and you want to dab up some paint. Um, we always have some paper towels. Paper towels we have, we always clean up our palette once we're pa uh, have painted for a few minutes or so or you know 15 minutes 20 minutes goes by it's good to clean up the palette keep the um, colors fresh and clean on your uh, palette we have a I'm using here a simple um, travel palette and this is my basic colors and if you uh, want to uh, if you're new to my uh, YouTube site you're just watching for the first time or you've only been here a few times please subscribe and also, when you subscribe, you can type in uh, to the YouTube uh, search um, search screen. You can type in uh, My Palette by Chris Petrie, and, and you'll see that I have all the colors listed, and I go over what colors I use, the brands, and the actual name of the colors. So you can uh, paint along with the same colors if you like. So that's the um, pretty much some fresh, clean water. And we empty out our bucket every, you know, 15 20 minutes we'll just get some fresh water put some fresh water in our bucket and that's pretty much it we're all ready to uh, draw and paint so here we're just going to do our simple uh, approach that we use um, 
pretty much uh, on a consistent basis we're going to do a contour drawing of um, a still life across from us and uh, it's going to be just a uh, quick still life um, drawing and painting and just to go over the fundamentals of how we do it so I'll make sure that I um, I'm just going to get my my rectangle here all right so now I know I'm good I'm on camera my rectangle is good then I'm even gonna I'm just gonna take some tape and put some tape down too on um, this makes a nice border so when you're finished painting you can just lift up the tape and you have a nice uh, um, sharp looking uh, frame, frame around the painting. And this, is, this is a composition for practice. Um, most times when we're um, painting in watercolor, drawing and painting, we're, we're more or less we're practicing up on our skills and, uh, and then occasionally if we're going to do a finished painting for someone or we're gonna, we have a show or we're going to make a gift for somebody, a gift card or something like that, then we're going to be in more of a, a little bit more careful mode and um, but for the most part, a lot of it's just the practice, everyday practice. And uh, I'm sure everyone is doing a great job out there. Um, contour drawing and, and painting and uh, getting familiar with all the, the techniques and um, processes that we use. So we're just going to continue with our same process we do on our channel here. We always go through the same process. We, we're going to look across from us and say, Okay, I'm looking across from me. I have things set up. I have a still life set up. Let's, um, and I also had uh, completed one of these um, still lifes yesterday to, to practice up. So this is basically what I have across from me. So that's uh, similar to what we have uh, now set up across from me. I think I have a few different things set up. But basically, it's a, a really cool birdhouse. Uh, it's just uh, unfinished wood. I got this at the hobby sh store. And then a, an apple, a lemon, an orange, and a pepper, and a paintbrush. And then again, the napkin, that's a striped napkin, which we have. We used, we put over the top of the uh, base of the um, foam board. And that's essentially it. So that's what I'm looking at across from me t to the right. So I have it set up to the right of me on my uh, art table. And we're going to do the same thing. So we're just going to, um, I might have shifted things a little bit, but for the most part, and I have a light on top, set up over the top of the uh, still life. So there's some good, nice, strong light straight above the um, still life to give us some nice shadowing and bright light on top of the objects, the uh, fruit and the paintbrush and so forth. So let's get started. And we're just having fun here. And, and since I did this, and since I did this uh, yesterday, um, so now I have a good, already I have a good idea of where everything is going to be in my rectangle, in our space that we have here. So I really don't need to do that light preliminary sketch, but if you don't have a first uh, run done, like if, you, if you're if you going to do this for the first time and you have something set up across from you, it is good to maybe do a real light preliminary sketch first, just to kind of get where you want everything in your in your rectangle so that you kind of lay everything out really super light then you go in and do your final contour drawing with your darker pencil line so you can see those as you're painting does that make sense and you see this too if, you, if you've been on my channel for a while and you follow we're always trying to do a preliminary light sketch super light sketch just so you can barely see it so just so we know where everything is generally going to be and we get we and we get warmed up too when we do that so Let's just do it maybe here, just just so we go through the, the uh, process. So now we have our still life set up. And then we also have a reference that we already did in a composition here already. So we can set that up across from us as well. And then uh, I did change the uh, angle a little bit. So I'm going to leave it as it is set up here. And So this is the super light preliminary sketch
And as you can see, I'm, I'm doing this light preliminary sketch. I'm looking at the proportions of this, the birdhouse here, and I'm saying, all right, the roof is about the same distance from the point of the ridge of that roof down to the base of the um, birdhouse, where the, where the platform is for the birdhouse. So um, I can scale that half and half. So that's about correct. And I can see a little bit of the side of the birdhouse here, the platform, and then I see the lemon starts here. Okay, so now again just a preliminary light sketch. And we have our orange, and then we have a, a lime here, and we have a shadow. We have some really nice shadows here with the light above, so the lights above here shining down. And then back here we have an apple. And again, preliminary. This is preliminary. Uh, that light, super light sketch. And then we have our paintbrush. Approximately there. And the back of the table is about here. And I'm just going to do those really light preliminary uh, sketches for the for the lines on the uh, tablecloth that I put down on top of the table, which is just some foam board. And that's pretty much a super preliminary light sketch. And okay, now we're going to go back in and we're going to start to do our our contour drawing. This would be a perfect time to take a break, but since we're making a video here, uh, we're going to keep going. Does that make sense though? So if you've, if you've done a preliminary sketch, it's probably going to take 5-10 minutes, and that's about what we've been working here. So that would be a perfect time to take a break, relax, maybe, you know, um, stretch out a little bit, um, have a, you know something to drink, some tea, some coffee, whatever. Um, you know, maybe um, just you know, just to relax for five or ten minutes, then come back and we'll do our our um, our drawing, our contour drawing. And we're ready now. We have everything laid out just the way we want it. And now we can go again. We're looking across from us, and now we're going to start in and we're going to do our um, our contour drawing. So. And I'm carefully following the angles. And sometimes it's good just to maybe draw the shadow in there. There's a shadow under this orange, so I'm gonna, I'm just gonna draw that shadow under the orange. I'm gonna do the, the line. So here we're contour drawing, and here what we're doing is just carefully following the lines that we that we see across from us as we're looking at the uh, fruit and the still life setup across from us. There's a shadow under here. That's the line of the tablecloth. 
there's actually multiple lines so we're gonna capture that just so we re it reminds us to paint uh, a number of lines in the tablecloth as we see it okay and then we'll continue here we have the frame of the uh, base of the uh, the birdhouse and then we have the uh, lemon here so we're gonna and again we just slowly look at all the angles and curves of each object we're drawing we kinda in, a, in essence we're trying to forget what we're we're trying to forget that it's a, an apple or a lemon or a lime or a birdhouse and we're just more or less thinking of lines, we're, angles of lines, uh, curves, angles, um, scale, how big, how small is it. Um, if I drew a lemon this big over here like this, that would be way out of scale compared to the size of this birdhouse. So that's why when we do our preliminary sketch you can get those the scale of everything, um, you know, really dialed in nicely and then if you have to do a little um, if you have to do a little bit of erasing when you do that preliminary light sketch does this make sense if you do a real preliminary light sketch it's easy to, to just do a quick little bit of erasing and you know you're never going to see that uh, light pencil line once we're done painting so that's another great uh, reason that the preliminary sketch works great and then here now we're going in to do the apple And that has a shadow as well. The lemon is sh shadow there. And we want to remember to capture our the table and tablecloth. This is pretty good. This is uh, And I just fit, finished off a little bit of detail here. The um, the hole for the birds. They can go in and uh, have um, the bird seed inside the um, birdhouse here. And uh, just a few little details. Um, and we'll we'll do our paintbrush. Alright, perfect. Now, another great time for a break once we're done doing our um, final contour drawing. Now we take another break, 10 minutes, you know, 5-10 minutes, relax, let ourselves rest a little bit. All the muscles in our body and our, in our brain, we let everything just relax. No stress, no worries. Come back in 10 minutes, we come back and then we're going to be ready to paint. So now, I'm going to go through this a little uh, fast we'll just kind of key in on some of the um, ideas and concepts that we're working with here with our paints and our um, our application of the paint so here the the main thing we want to um, key in on is we have the light set up up top here so we'll just make sure we we make a, a really good point to say that our um, our light source is a lamp, a desk lamp above this scene, shining down, and 
that's giving us nice light on the tops of the objects and then producing nice clear visible shadows dark you know darker shadows under these our objects here are our, our still life objects so that we have we have that established that makes our life a lot easier as an artist now to go in and paint this as well so let's we'll go in and we'll now we'll we'll just kind of make a quick note that since the lights coming from the top we're going to have a lighter tonal value and lighter color on the tops of these objects which is the apple and lemon and orange and lime it'll be darker around the center of the uh, fruit here and then at the bottom it's going to be a little bit darker yet and then at the very very bottom we're going to have that darker shadow so let's key in on that and we should be fine so we'll we'll go in and we'll squint our eyes as we look over and we kind of notice that the um we'll start with maybe um some raw sienna some cerulean blue raw sienna cerulean blue And we'll start working with our uh, our birdhouse here and we'll get some interesting color. We notice, I'll take a little bit of um, French ultramarine blue. There's a shadow along here. And then here my brush, I'm I'm moving my brush in different directions. That makes things look a little more interesting. Since I know there's an orange here, some of that orange is actually going to reflect into the wood of this um, birdhouse. It's very subtle, but it is there. I'm seeing it. And maybe even a little bit of the yellow from the lemon. So I'll put a little bit of yellow here, orange up here, yellow here. Keep going here. We'll get our uh, roof uh, here, and a little bit of uh, variation. We'll put a little bit of blue on the uh, roof on this side. This is a little darker on the side where the base is of the birdhouse, so I'm going to make this a little darker. I see a little bit of light here, right by the lemon. I'll leave that. There's a bit of uh, shadow there. And then it's light again over here. So sometimes you can put down little bits of uh, color and uh, tone, tonal value, to um, kind of capture the, the light and the bright light of the um, light coming down from above. And then the shadow areas where something is casting shadows and it's if you can't always see it exactly as long as you're if you're looking across at your scene and you keep looking there and you just put little bits of shadow um, it tends to be fine it okay and then uh, let's go in we'll do our orange here so I'm just taking fresh squeeze to paint on the tip of the brush.
Then uh, a little bit of green. I'll rinse my brush. Dry off a little bit of the water. And I'll go in with a little bit of sap green. Just to get some of that shadow here on the underside. And then back into the orange, cadmium orange. And then here at the, I'm going to rinse my brush again in the water bucket, dry off the brush just a touch with the napkin, with the um, tissue. And then we're going to work some of that color and we'll leave a little spot of light there. And that should be good. And then right away, we want to go in cerulean blue, raw sienna. We'll get our uh, our shadow in, and we'll just connect that up right with the bottom of the orange. A little bit of French ultramarine blue, just to change up the tonal value of the shadow a bit. Then we can go in and we'll do our um, sap green and a little bit of French ultramarine blue. And we're going to do our um, lime. I dry off my brush just a little bit. We'll keep keep this area lighter up here. I'm going to put in a little bit of raw sienna. And then I'll go in with some uh, cobalt blue the shadow, a little bit of raw sienna, right away with the shadow, and we'll continue, we'll, we'll start working this way, we're trying to connect everything, a little bit of splashing uh, to keep things uh, loose and fun, uh, we've got the lemon here, let's uh, So I'm going straight into the cadmium lemon, yellow, and cad uh, yellow. A little bit of that green and blue mix. It's a little bit... Again, I'm using straight uh, squeeze to paint. Then I rinse my brush. I dry off the brush just a little bit on the uh, tissue and we I'll leave a highlight there and then again some raw sienna for the shadow with a little bit of the blue mix And I uh, tie that right in with the bottom of the lemon, the shadow. It's got to be done quickly. And we'll go, we'll, we'll work on the apple. Straight out of the tube paint. And a little bit of green, sap green.